Oh, what's going on guys, Gamer Dude back once again, bringing you some more informative gaming news. Well, it's more of a discussion than news, but anyway, before we begin, y'all know the routine, or at least I hope you do by now. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you smash that like button and drop me a subscribe, because it would just be your good deed of the day. Now then... As you can probably tell from the title, we are going to be talking about God of War and its future. And whether or not it's actually time to retire the iconic character of Kratos. Now, Kratos has always been the series' main protagonist. But after finishing God of War Ragnarok's story, like, for the fifth time, <laughs> it doesn't seem right at this point, that is, to bring him back again. At least not in the next game. So, for almost two decades now, Kratos has been the face of the God of War franchise. Originally, just a man seeking revenge on the gods for the murder of his family, Kratos then becomes the titular God of War himself. And he continued to wreak havoc on Olympus for multiple games, before taking a bit of a hiatus. Kratos then later returned with 2018's God of War, though he wasn't quite the same revenge-obsessed god-killer fans once knew him as. This was a more settled-down Kratos. You know, th this was a Kratos who wanted to put his past behind him, he wanted to live a quiet life and just be normal again. And then, as the events of that game progressed, we later started to see that side of him return. And even more prominently so, in God of War Ragnarok. But yeah, uh, by the time of God of War Ragnarok, Kratos has matured into an all-new type of protagonist from the, the time we first met him. And the one that actually doesn't mind sharing the spotlight with um, new protagonist Atreus. Now, God of War Ragnarok not only manages to bring the Norse saga to a satisfying close, albeit a bit too early for my taste. You know, I prefer trilogy of games to bring things to a close, but I, I do think Ragnarok brought the Norse saga to a rather satisfying close. But it also manages to bring Kratos' entire journey to a rather climactic endpoint. And that's while continuing to flesh out Atreus' character as well. But as in the case with any successful game franchise, there are sure to be sequels further down the line. Now this is where the title of this video comes into play. Should Santa Monica try its very best to leave Kratos out of the next adventure or retire the character entirely. But at that point, is it even God of War? Because Kratos is the titular God of War. He is the iconic character that gave this franchise its name. So by removing Kratos, it's not really God of War anymore, is it? So the next game wouldn't be called God of War, it would be called Adventures with Atreus, or Adventures with Loki, or Loki Adventures in Time, or Loki Adventures Across Midgard, something like that. So my, my point being, if they were to retire Kratos, what would they rename the franchise, you know? Uh, obviously he might appear in, uh, um, in future games as like a cameo appearance, but it still wouldn't be the God of War. If you're not playing as Kratos, or switching between playing as Kratos and someone else, then again, it, it's still not God of War. It's, so, it's a different game entirely without Kratos. Now, unless Atreus becomes the new God of War, and Kratos is happy to settle down and just drink tea in his in his little hut then <laughs> fair play you know that there's a there's a new god of war the title is passed on i suppose but in my understanding from playing the previous games and the new god of wars 
that title has to be earned by killing or dispatching or doing something to the current god who holds that title and as as i'm sure you all remember the scene the scene on screen right now uh, odin's talking to kratos uh, about being worshipped and you know he, he's like well has anyone ever even worshipped you do you know what it is to be a god and by the end of god of war ragnarok we see that kratos is actually going to be worshipped there was a mural painted by assumably his uh, dead wife that depicts kratos being worshipped in the future so does that mean kratos will die and in the in the next game albeit there will be a next game because why wouldn't there be uh, he's going to be dead and the title of the god of war is passed down to atreus or somebody else or maybe Tyr joins atreus on his adventures and that way they still can call it god of war who knows but let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below but in my opinion god of war ragnarok it acts as the perfect ending for kratos's character arc maybe an unpopular opinion but i really do think it brought the character of kratos full circle you know I, I really do think it brought his character's arc to a satisfying conclusion in the original greek saga kratos has a fairly one-noted character arc after being manipulated and deceived into killing his wife and child kratos vows revenge on all gods not just you know his gods but all gods and one of those gods in particular was Ares. What follows is a murderous rampage through the Greek pantheon with more gods meeting Kratos, uh, Kratos' Blades of Chaos in each new installment. And of course, with the destruction of uh, Olympus came the destruction of Greece. So in the next game, if Kratos is absent and Atreus is exploring the world, will Atreus go to the ruins of Greece? But yeah, uh, but by the end of the Greek saga, Kratos is left with only the notion that gods have no right to exist in the first place. With each one he meets being more selfish and cruel than the last. And by the time of God of War 2018, or the events of God of War 2018, Kratos has tried to leave his Greek origins in the past and has started his new life in Midgard with his wife Faye and new son Atreus. Now, it, it, with her help, like, Kratos actually begins to come to terms with his past life and the anger that once consumed him. You know, he, he calms down, he settles down. Something he thought he would never do again after literally being forced to murder his first family he never thought he would get to this again he never thought he would be in this place again but uh, it, it's all a charade you know it, it, he soon returns to his murderous ways <laughs> basically I mean he doesn't have a choice but yeah it, it, it sort of falls on him but um, it's, it's kind of Atreus that really brings him out of his shell. Believing that Atreus might end up just like Kratos, he initially hides Atreus' godhood from him. You know, he, do, he doesn't tell him that he comes from godhood. That, you know, he, he his father, is a, is a god. But over the course of the first game in 2018... Kratos learns to trust his son a little bit more. And through his actions, Kratos learns that not all gods are necessarily inherently evil or selfish. Uh, Freya, for example. He doesn't trust her, but she's not inherently evil or selfish. You know, She just wants, for, for the longest time, revenge on Kratos for killing Baldur. And then later in God of War Ragnarok... Kratos explains all of this, you know, and Freya slowly begins to forgive him. 
and that sort of ve godly, vengeful wrath kind of fades away. But yeah, uh, Kratos has learned to trust his son completely, and in a bittersweet ending, agrees that he should set off on his own adventures. So whether the next God of War game features Josh Kratos again, or it spins off, which is more likely, uh, spins off to Atreus, is anybody's game right now. You know, it, it's uh, it's it's a whole new ballpark for the for this franchise in a, in a sense. But yeah, right after this moment, and I mentioned this earlier, Kratos also discovers an ancient Jotunheim mural that correctly predicted the events of Ragnarok literally years or perhaps even decades before the events of the game. And it shows a moment with Kratos' likeness with people kneeling at his feet and actually worshipping him, which comes back again to what I said earlier about Odin specifically saying to Kratos, what do you know of godhood? Has anyone ever actually worshipped you? And this mural depicts that he is actually going to be worshipped in the future, possibly for freeing the realm of the, of the tyranny of the gods. But um, Kratos' entire character arc spanning the entire franchise had led to this particular moment. A character that was sure his past, past actions would lead him to a life of misery and isolation discovers that not only has a set of loving family and friends now, but that he'll also be revered as a god, which he never thought he would have. I mean, Kratos loathes and despises gods, even though he is a god himself. But he has never embraced the fact that he is a god. He has always resented himself for his his godhood. But now he is actually going to be revered and worshipped and remembered. Not for a tyrant, but as a loving person. You know, he, he's going to be remembered and worshipped as a person, not as a god. But in this moment, Kratos' character arc feels complete. It feels like it's come full circle since uh, the prequel game God of War Ascension to the end of Ragnarok. It feels like it is done. I mean, sure, of course, if they do move on with different characters in the franchise, uh, like a game featuring Atreus, a game featuring Freya, a uh, game feature in Thor's Daughter, maybe. A game feature in Tyr. A prequel game uh, featuring some of the Norse gods. Maybe you play as Thor, which would be absolutely dope, by the way. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it really does feel like his character arc is complete. And I don't know, it may be an unpopular opinion. Uh, you might think I'm chatting out of my ass. Uh, you might think I'm crazy. You might think, uh, again, as I said earlier, it can't be God of War without Kratos because he is the God of War. But we have also learned that after the events of Ragnarok, Tyr is still alive. So there is another God of War. There is the, uh, the Greek God of War, which is Kratos, and the Norse God of War, which is Tyr. Now, Tyr is a pacifist in this game, and frankly boring, and for the most part was actually uh, impersonated by Odin. But towards the end of the game, we find the uh, Asgardian prison, and Tyr is still alive. So there is still a god of war in the franchise, regardless if he chooses to fight or not. But th this is exactly why I believe... Kratos shouldn't come back for another game, or at least not be featured as the main protagonist in another game. God of War Ragnarok ties up Kratos' character arc in a rather satisfying way, in my opinion, and bringing him back as the primary playable protagonist in the next game would only end up 
either retconning or retroactively ruining that perfect ending we got at the end of Ragnarok. But th there are plenty of other potential playable characters for the next God of War game, uh, as I've stated throughout this video. And while Kratos shouldn't appear as the main character, he could still appear for a brief cameo, so long as it do doesn't lessen the effect of the ending we saw in God of War Ragnarok. Uh, but yeah, that, that's going to... Uh, going to be about it for this video so let me know in the comments what you guys think uh, again do you think i'm chatting out my ass uh, do you think there can't be a god of war game called god of war without the actual god of war <laughs> uh, do you think they'll just rename it entirely uh, just keep a familiar vibe to it you know maybe keep the symbol of the god of war uh, like on the franchise but just change the name of it or do you think they'll just keep kratos in but he won't be the playable character. You know, he'll just be a background character like Atreus was in the first game. So yeah, let, let me know your thoughts on that. I'd be interested to hear them. And uh, thank you all once again for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Of course, you all know the routine. If you aren't new to the channel, please make sure you smash that like button and drop me a subscribe because it would just be your good deed of the day. Same applies if you are a returning viewer. Uh, stay tuned because there's plenty more coming from me uh, once my Wi-Fi starts working again, that is. <laughs> uh, we've got some more Alan Wake Remastered coming through. Uh, there's some updates for Saints Row. That is the reboot Saints Row. Uh, I'm thinking of doing another Hogwarts Legacy playthrough. Uh, we've got some updates for Gran Turismo, Gotham Knights, Sonic Frontiers. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West DLC, that's when I get my finances sorted out. Uh, Star Trek Resurgence, uh, that new Telltale game, The Expanse, and of course, later this year, Spider-Man 2. And we are now actually only 99 days away from that game's release. Super hyped. I can't hype it up like I did the first game, because then I'd just be counting down with... Uh, I'd just be essentially like doing the same countdown you know i'll be doing the same videos and i can't unfortunately do long plays of the original games because i don't have the necessary equipment to live stream them unfortunately i would love to but i can't uh so yeah that's it for this video then uh so until the next one this has been gamer dude happy gaming and i will catch you all in the next one guys